going on everyone welcome to episode number 34 here on the proven knowledge podcast this is the creator series today i had a guest out of alabama he's an artist i've already worked with um his name is mike dance he's a really dope uh, mc very lyrical guy and i found mike's music in i believe probably july of 2019 over on soundcloud i remember reaching out to him probably like the day i heard uh, one of his songs and i ended up sending him some beats i think later in the week and then I didn't, uh, we didn't talk again until probably April of 2020. And he told me he was using one of the beats I had sent on his uh, album called uh, Back on Track, which ended up dropping this past July. And I produced the song Clear to Me. Uh, so we ended up, you know, connecting after basically an entire year, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. So I figured I'd reach out to Mike this week to get him on the show. And, uh, Man, he went into real great detail about his you know journey moving from new orleans to alabama uh how he accidentally played uh one of his first songs for his dad and his mom kind of unintentionally and you'll kind of hear like the story about that and how that happened um he talks about connecting with friends um in college and kind of how they've been making music together ever since he's trying to get into producing and i kind of encouraged him in the episode to uh hopefully do that eventually because i feel like just his ear for beats and his ear for production as an MC, I feel like is really dope. So I think if he, um, you know, ever decided to make beats and got really good at it, he could be a real, you know, threat just from being able to rap on his own beats and do his own thing. So, you know, I'm wishing Mike all the best. Me and him are going to keep working together. We have already talked about doing music again. So hopefully that'll be happening in the near future. But I hope uh, everyone can just hear this episode and you know, discover a really dope uh, artist who I believe in, and I can tell he really believes in himself. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Welcome, everyone, to episode number 34 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series. Today we got a really dope uh, MC, artist that I've worked with before, really big fan of this guy. Mike Dance is here. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. How about you? Yes, sir. I'm good as well. And like I said, thank you for getting back with me about being on the show. Obviously, we've had, you know, our dialogue in the past and everything. We've been working now for probably over a year and a half, honestly, since we first connected. Uh, So I'm glad to get you on the show and kind of, you know, pick your brain about some stuff because I'm curious about a lot of things. So to start out, we pretty much just have the guests kind of give, you know, a little bit of background on themselves, how they got started in music. Uh, I know you had a name change about your artist name as well. So kind of just go into that a little bit, just kind of the basic stuff. Well, basically, uh, I've been around music uh, my entire life. Um, well, I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, my folks are from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. And all, I would say Mississippi as well. So, everywhere. A little bit down here, down in the south. But uh, I started off doing choir, you know, singing, like at church. Mm-hmm. And throughout what from elementary school throughout high school um i got out of the church choir sometime in high school and i just started working on uh being in the school choir and during that time i was writing writing you know i didn't technically start rapping like and getting in the studio until like my senior year and that happened so that happened because one of my uh close one of my close friends who produced and he raps down here i heard him and another one of my friends they were talking and i was behind them and they were like oh they were talking about beats and music and all that Hmm. and i was just behind him i was like well if y'all got beats i got bars (laughs) and it was just so funny because he was like oh that and he sent me a, a couple beats and one of them I used that was on my uh my mixtape, my Before the Journey mixtape. Mm-hmm. And it was so bad. Well, it wasn't bad. <laughs> it was just what I recorded it on was really bad. So back then, I had a, uh, my Android phone. I don't know what it was, but it was some Walmart phone. <laughs> and I kid you not, I was in there recording on a uh, a karaoke machine. And how it how I would do it was I would have my phone playing the beat and recording at the same time, and I would be sitting there with the uh, karaoke machine just rapping, just rapping, just rapping. 
and I gave it to him, and he was like, "Bro, what the heck is this?" <laughs> and it was, and it wasn't like he was like, "Like this is terrible." Like what I was rapping was mm-hmm. terrible. He was like, "Dog, if you need something, somewhere to record, I can record you at the house." And like for a minute, it was just like that. It was me, my little brother, and my little cousin. And I didn't really get into a studio until uh, my dad's cousin. Is it my dad's cousin? Someone in my family. Uh, yeah, I went to Atlanta. And this was when I was thinking about going to the arts, the art institute to do music. Mm-hmm. And I was, he was like, oh, when you get done with that, just come swing by here. And we swung by and we... Uh, recorded a song and that was probably my song that I put on uh, SoundCloud it's still there I think on my page like if you scroll all the way down to the bottom it is still there it's mm-hmm. called Lord Knows and then I went through so many name changes then I was going as I believe King Mickey or just Mickey D and that was a nickname I was given in like elementary school by one of my teachers and it was like what is a Mickey D? I don't know I don't know sounds cool and I did that song and a funny story about that um I was supposed to send it to myself now I'm a junior and I don't know how I did it but I sent it to my father by mistake now, they knew I wanted to do music, but they hadn't really heard my music before. Mm-hmm. That was like the first time they actually heard the kind of music I was making. When I tell you, like, my verse, I didn't cuss that much back then. I didn't, I tried to keep it as clean as possible. But my little cousin and my little brother, they did not. They <laughs> did not care. They were in that mud to spit what came from the heart. And when I tell you, I walked past the room and I heard that song playing and I was like, no. <laughs> How did I send it to him? You made like the biggest mistake. <laughs> and it was just so funny because he was just like, he was just singing a song and like my dad, he's more of a, I ain't gonna say lenient, but he actually listened to my music. My mom will not. <laughs> if it cuffs, if it says anything that's not gospel she will not listen to it <laughs> and and it was just like I was like okay he's cool with it I just don't want my mom to hear it and I see you know he's bringing it in the living room <laughs> and he's playing it for my mom and I'm just like no 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 <laughs> and so I was just like yeah I'm gonna do music and then it was like oh so this the kind of music I was like yeah yeah that's the kind of music I'm gonna make <laughs> And so then I get to uh, Alabama State where I majored in recording indi- recording technology. So basically I was going to be a, uh, an engineer and I was going to do stuff like that. Hmm. Didn't stay too long. Did not stay too long. I flunked out probably like the second semester. I was, yeah. But while I was there, I met a bunch of guys now two of the guys that the first guy that sent me to beat and those two they had went to state as well and then I met some I believe one more other guy two more but we all had went to the same high school at some point so I knew of them but Mm -hmm. I didn't know them for real for real Mm -hmm. and we had all linked up and I don't know how we I forgot how we did it they'll have to tell me the full story but we eventually all got in the studio and we've been making music ever since that day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had, I was still Mickey D when I first got to uh, state. And then sometime in there, I wanted to change my name from Mickey D to something else because it was like, bro, what is a Mickey D? And I was like, oh, it's just, oh. I guess I'll change the name. I changed it. 
And so I changed it to MJ Almighty because one of my friends is like, oh, put this as your Snapchat name. I said, oh, that's that's cool. That's a cool name. So I put it at that. And then I was MJ Almighty for, I'm going to say, a year and a half. For, for a while, I'm going to say. And then um, why I changed that, it was I was in another studio session at State. And he was like, bro, what in the world is MJ Almighty? You sound like a child that's <laughs> just getting into rapping. I was like, dang, that's rough. Like, dang, they didn't like Nicky T. MJ Almighty ain't working. So I was just like, well, let me just drop the Almighty part because on YouTube, when I was dropping music videos and stuff like that, they had this guy that was an Almighty MJ. And it'll be, if you typed in MJ Almighty, he'll pop oh. up and not me. Messes up, the, messes up the search results. Yeah, yeah. on search results. And I was like, oh, man, I, I can't be associated with him. And it wasn't like he was terrible, mm -hmm. but it was, we made totally different kind of music. And if I was telling you, oh, I don't, you know, talk about drugs and killing and all that. And then you look up MJ Almighty and this guy pops up and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this is telling me a totally different thing. So I was like, well, dang, well, let me drop the Almighty because my nickname is MJ. And I was like, well, let me just drop the Almighty and not just be MJ. Mm. And I was MJ for a minute and I was just like, eh, that's just a little too close to home because I don't want to be all out like if I make it and a random kid MJ I'm like ah, that's reserved for family <laughs> ah. and so I was just like well and I think this name change came what late last year early I think I think it was probably I think it was probably like end of last year because when I like found your stuff you were still MJ I think so like yeah. it had to be like end of 2019 probably yeah 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 and so one of my friends one of I work with he calls me Mike Dance when he see me he be like yo Mike Dance what you doing bro and I was like that's a cool name that is a cool name and it was. The biggest part was was I how I was gonna spell it. it was like I was gonna be either M A well D A N Z Z or how I actually start to spell my last name D A N T Z. And I was like, well, they both sound the same, but dance with the T Z scene is cooler because it's just a different spelling. And I was. It's just like, well, Mike Dance is cool, so I'm gonna stick with that. So right now, I'm Mike Dance. Until someone tells me that's a terrible name and I have to change it again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's probably the most simple one, though. Like, it's it's already attached to you anyway, and like that's how yeah. that's probably the easiest thing for people to associate you with, too. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. almost like the simplest name was the best one <laughs> at the end of it all. Yeah. But like that's yeah. that's a crazy journey though because I didn't know like the majority of that I didn't even know you you were by like a couple other names either because like like I said when I found yeah. your stuff you were just MJ and then you just changed to like Mike Dance and I was like oh okay like he's just using like kind of an abbreviated of his name which makes total sense yeah. so but that's crazy and like your your whole journey with like your family and everything and like how that's kind of come around full circle that's kind of crazy too just to see how you yeah. and I could tell like personally just from like stepping back and like since when I discovered your music I can tell you've already grown like a ton as far as like your sound and everything and that kind of leads into where I was going next I wanted to talk about back on track which was the album you put out this year and everything um mm -hmm. happy to be a part of that by the way it's f fucking amazing man uh, I kind of wanted to uh, I kind of wanted to have you break that down a little bit because like what kind of went into making that and why did you want that to be like your first uh, kind of like the reinvention album of who you are as an artist then and kind of what you wanted to lead off with. Okay. Uh, well, back on track, that name came with uh, me just thinking that 
for for a minute I was not totally focused on music mm-hmm. and it wasn't like me not being focused on music it was me slacking and not working on my craft getting better and it was like it's time for me to get back on track mm-hmm. with everything that I'm doing and it kind of, it kind of comes with uh how I was gonna uh do a rollout with a couple of my projects um because my first one is called before the journey and what this one was going to be called before it became back on track it was going to be either getting ready for the road or all packed up and it was basically going to be you know my mixtape was y'all getting introduced to me you know da 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 this is before the journey of me making my name in the industry and mm-hmm. uh all packed up was going to be just you know me just getting ready to get on the road and just to do how whatever I can do to make it on and during that time you know I had the name change I had the really a come to Jesus moment with my music and it was just like sooner or later you got to take this serious Mm -hmm. um and it wasn't like I was not taking it serious it was I was working and I was in school I was like do I want to go back to school do I want to not go back to school and just spend the majority of my time working or just working on my music but and a job with money because I do have a car and eventually my mama is going to want to get me out the house so I, I need to start making some decisions on how life is going to turn out mm-hmm. and during that time I what I, I lost a friend um and it was just really depressing I must say because for, for the longest I, I sat in my room like I've been working on this project for like since 2018 uh the first two songs I wrote for this project were Blacks and I Like You. Blacks is dedicated to my friend because when I, right before he died, um, I was going through some things with this girl and they all used to smoke Blacks. And I was just like, well, man, I, I, I want to try one. And it was, it wasn't like a, oh, I see y'all doing it. I want to do it. It was just like, well, you know, I want to try a different way to release myself. And I grabbed blacks. And he told me, he was like, dog, don't do this. Because once something hit the fan, and it was like, if you use this to cope, once stuff goes, like, if stuff goes left, you're going to fall back back on this. Mm -hmm. And during that time I was going through something with a girl and she was just messing with my head so every day I would go smoke three on a day breakfast lunch dinner <laughs> blowing 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 and then eventually later that year he passed away and for a long time I smoked and I smoked and I smoked and I smoked him. And I believe in the song, I said, no, no, I didn't say it. But that song came from me just smoking blacks. And it was like, it's a habit I know I have to kick. But the pain is literally just pulling me right back to it. Mm -hmm. And for that long time, for a long time, those two were the only songs I had. I didn't write. I went to the studio every day, but most times I just sat in there and it was just like, mm. and if I didn't go to the studio, I was sitting in the room, just watching TV, doing nothing. And it was like, eventually I have to start doing something. <laughs> and that's literally how the name came to uh, be and the music I literally recorded wrote and recorded the 
recorded in last year. Um, and I ain't gonna say ironically, but right before it released, I lost my aunt, my aunt earlier this year, mm-hmm. literally a month before I was supposed to drop it. And it was just like, man, and tell you the truth, him and my aunt were like, I'm just going to say it truly, my biggest fans. Um, And it was just a, that project was a long time to get through. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's how that came to be. Mm -hmm. Man, I got to say, like, just from the listener's perspective, because I remember, like, I think you dropped, like, the same day that, like, Logic came out, because I remember listening to his album, and then I remember, like, I'm going to check out Mike's album, because I want to hear the whole thing, like, all the way through, and I was just, like, blown away, like, the sequencing, and, like, you honestly did get very personal. Like, I felt like every song had, like, a purpose to it. Like, I, I felt like there was no, and I enjoyed that it was, like, 10 tracks, and it was kind of, like, short and to the point but you got like very personal and like all the stories and everything and i was just like blown away and i was like for like a first album i felt like that was very well done and well put together honestly and i just enjoyed the entire thing like sacrifices like that's probably one of my favorite songs of the year honestly like that one was incredible i mean i just felt the whole thing was so well done and like thank you for sharing the story about it because that actually like kind of gives me uh, and I hope, you know, the people that check out your music kind of get, like, an idea then about, like, what kind of went into it. Because I can definitely hear that in the music itself as far as, like, how that would have came out that way. That's, like, a crazy story, though. So, um, you know, I appreciate you giving that kind of backstory there for sure. Um, so as far as, let's just say, coming up or even now, as far as artists that you listen to that maybe inspired you to be like, I want to make music one day, I want to do this, who were those artists and who do you think you're still listening to heavily that kind of inspires you to create the best music that you can? Oh, so, it's a lot. (laughs) I figure it's probably a lot. (laughs) It is a lot. (laughs) So, what got me really into rap, like rapping, writing, and all that, J. Cole. Um, I can hear that for sure. J. Cole, early Drake, and Wayne. Mm. Wayne was my first favorite rapper. You know, New Orleans, loved everything he did. Mm -hmm. And when Drake came in, I was more of a, because I can sing, Drake had a big influence on me because I was like, oh, well, I can... I can sing a little bit. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna sound as good as him, but I can sing a little bit. And then it was in the midst of me growing up. I played ball, and J. Cole, I think he had a basketball scholarship. Mm-hmm. So a lot of what is his his early work really kind of relayed my basketball journey as well. And it was just more of the struggle of him actually being good and wanting to be good at basketball and how he could actually rap as well. And so early on, it was Cole, Drake, Wayne, and then Kendrick came. Mm. And Kendrick was just all over the place. And it wasn't all over the place as in he was just speaking about crazy stuff. It was the stories he told. Like, my favorite Kendrick song to this day is Sing About Me, I'm Dying of Thirst. It's probably one of the hardest beats I've ever heard in my life. And just the story that he told in that song, I still get, just be sitting there like, he sat down and wrote that. Like, that's Mm -hmm. crazy. And right now, everybody tell you the truth uh, because I am a singer still so you know I got some R&B in there you know Chris's the Usher's the Her hmm. Black you know Ari Lennox all of them got R&B and then you have the the singer rapper type guys like the Smino Smino is that man just hmm. 
is he's dope top tier just top tier the way he can sing and then sing rap and then turn singing into rapping he's just real top tier mm-hmm. and then toby lou toby lou is probably other than the Coles, the kendricks is my favorite rapper today mm-hmm. um he is my first actual hip-hop concert that i've been to so that probably elevates him above the, the rest right now and it's just how Toby can just relay so many emotions and he can have fun. He can give you some real hard hitting songs. And Tyler, um, Tyler Creator, uh, mm-hmm. I didn't listen to him when he first came out because he was off the wall. <laughs> like Tyler the Creator scared me. <laughs> when he first came out because he had the upside down cross on his forehead he was eating roaches and I was like yeah this dude is not it I'm not listening to him um, then I was big in conspiracy theories so I believed in Illuminati so I was like oh no 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 Tyler oh my goodness he is so dangerous and then Flower Boy came out and I forgot what summer that was, but that was my soundtrack for that entire song. And then Igor came out, and it's just like, he sounds nothing how mm-hmm. he used to sound. It's like night and day difference, and honestly. Completely night and day. I'm just like, wow, that's what you call an evolution mm-hmm. in music. That's what you call growing up within your art. And I was like... I don't want to do it exactly like that, but that's something you can look up to. Mm-hmm. And I say ASAP Rocky as well. I totally forgot about him, but it's just, I don't know what it is with ASAP Rocky. Like he is, I ain't gonna say he's a terrible rapper, but he isn't top tier, mm-hmm. but he can rap, but the man is just a five when he gets on the draft. Mm-hmm. And when I say it, it's a lot, it's a lot. Um, you know, I got my friends down here that I make music with. I'm inspired by them. Um, watching them work hands on sometimes. It's very inspirational. And really, that's it. Really, yeah. I say it's a lot. And it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Like I can hear a lot of that, like in your stuff for real because like sorry for the weight that track you got like when i heard that come in with the horns and everything i was like this sounds like a j cole like vibe honestly and i saw the video and everything i'm like man this this is like freaking awesome like i just love that song and everything and it's another song that's like really short but i got into it like really quickly and everything and like so i definitely hear that for sure and like even kendrick too with the storytelling like you were saying like i feel like you have already tapped into that just from this project with like just the per like I said, the personal side of your life and what you've been sharing in the music and everything. Um, but yeah, I'd I'd be interested to see like like what you do if you did something similar to what Tyler's journey has been because like Tyler's journey has been very interesting for like a lot of people to watch because I know a lot of fans weren't happy like a lot of the Odd Future fans that were fans like in 2010, 2011, they weren't very pleased with like the recent stuff or like he might have lost some people. But, like, it took a lot of guts for him to do what he did because, like, he stayed true to who he was and did what he wanted. He didn't really care about everyone trying to fit him in a certain box and be like, oh, you can only do this type of thing. He was like, no, I'm going to do something totally different, totally left field, something that I might get, you know, backlash for or whatever, but it's what is true to me. And, like, he honestly became a much bigger artist because he did that even. You know what I mean? Like, he got Grammy nominated. I think he even won a Grammy for uh, Flower Boy, I think. Igor. Igor, yeah, you're right. So, like, yeah, yeah. so like it's just crazy to think that, like, he went from what you were talking about, which is, like, just the crazy stuff. And, like, that was, like, during the blog era of music and everything to, like, now he's one of the biggest artists and still the biggest producer as well in, like, music. Mm-hmm. And just to see him grow. So, like... To have that in mind for yourself as, like, a goal to be, like, yeah, I'm going to do this, but I also want to, like, eventually grow and continue to evolve my sound and my brand and, like, 
how I present myself to my fans, I think that's one of the most important things you can do, honestly. So, mm-hmm. but hats off to you for that, man, because I'm looking forward to seeing like what you can do from here after what I've already heard. But um, so, so I know I know you discussed kind of the making of this last album and kind of how you had to kind of get yourself out of a rut a little bit and kind of like kick yourself a bit to get creative and whatnot. As far as like this year and like the the crazy times we've been living in lately, is there anything that you've had kind of issues with as far as continuing on that path of like, I got to stay creative. I got to stay like somewhat um, on the grind still, or has it been a little challenging with everything that's been going on? You think? Oh, basically is I'm trying to not necessarily be independent, Uh but it's more of, of, I'm trying to do a lot Mm -hmm. myself. Um, I'm trying to get into producing. I started it earlier and I was like, "Ah, I'm going to stick to rapping. Mm -hmm. Well, once like some of my friends, they make beats themselves, but they also have one of them is a rapper himself. So right now he's focusing on himself. So I can't be like, hey, could I get some beats? He's like, uh, yeah, but I also have my project that I'm working on. Then I have another one of my producer friends. He lives 30 minutes up the road. So I can't be going to see him every day to go get beats. Mm-hmm. So it's more of me uh, trying to get into producing get into recording myself and also writing right now really because I don't want to say the same thing um, mm-hmm. and even if it's the same thing it's saying it the same way because one thing I realized uh, over the past couple of years when I would get in this like real good writing zone sometimes I start the song the same exact way or either with the same words or the same sentence. And I was like, dog, that's boring. Mm. You can't do that. And trying to, you know, find different ways to start songs, you know, write a hook, start the song with a hook, or start the song with me vocalizing or doing other stuff. It's just me trying to step out of what I normally do that's been the hardest thing mm-hmm. for me this year um, and not being able to do shows uh, yep. really because of the pandemic you don't want to be out there you know around a bunch of people all the time but I think I've done one show this entire year and I went to Birmingham Alabama which is two hours up the road I was by myself, um, and that was the same week my album dropped, I believe, or a couple weeks after, but I went all the way to Birmingham by myself, Hmm. with all my friends were like, hey, we are not going up there because, you know, we're in the middle of a panoramic, (laughs) as Gunner was saying, and it was just like, ugh, you don't want to do it, and it's just like, wow, I just dropped a project. And when you drop a project, you want to get out there, you want to perform all your songs, you want to be, yeah, 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 get on this, this is that, and getting out there, and it's just like, but you want to be safe at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you don't want to get out there and be going crazy at the show and then got to quarantine the next 14 days because mm-hmm. somebody tested positive, and you're like, oh, goodness. So, yeah, just not being able to perform and stepping out of my comfort zone, mm-hmm. trying to stay uncomfortable, really. I know that's that's been the most frustrating thing for most artists is just, like, they can't perform and, like, they're kind of just stuck in, like, they either have to create music or they're having to figure out, like, okay, what else can I do to kind of, like, get some revenue moving as well because, like, a lot of people yeah. made their money off touring, you know what I mean? So, like, when yeah. they took that away, it's kind of like people had to get a little more creative. 
that almost feeds into like what you were saying about your writing too. It's almost like people had to get a little uncomfortable in that as well and just kind of get more creative as far as like how are they going to push their message through all this and not just let it come to a complete halt. You know what I mean? Because like I think the good thing about like being like making music at the end of the day, like even if some of your like outlets are limited, you can still like keep going you know what i mean like with social media and everything you can still kind of push the narrative a bit and like get the right attention where you need it to get it might not be as good as what you'd had you'd have in mind if like every like you said if everyone was out and about kind of being able to socialize in person and whatnot but uh i think if you can make it happen like just through social media and using your you know the technology we have today um that's usually never a bad thing either but i that's interesting though about like you said about like starting songs the same way and whatnot it's almost like um you know in order to evolve in order to have the evolution that we talked about it's like you have to force yourself to do different things because if you do get too comfortable you're going to be stagnant and you're never really going to grow at all and like um i i think that's one thing that like anyone can really um kind of take as advice and just use but like you, I'll tell you, man. You should you should honestly like think about producing. I I know like you're like a super dope MC, but I feel like you could do some great work as a producer, to be honest. Because I think you got the ear for it. Like I think you could make some really good stuff, to be honest. Like me personally, what are you thinking about using? Are you do you know like what like uh, software you want to use or anything? Like have you dabbled on anything yet? Uh, I'm using FL. Um, okay, that's that's what yeah, that's what I my use. friends use. Yep. And that's what when I was starting to get into it, they would I would literally just be behind them watching. Mm -hmm. And then I just really use YouTube, really. Yep. Um that's the biggest cheat code we got right now. So I'm sticking with FL nice. right now. To me that was always the easiest one to use. That's why I've like stuck with it for the past five years just because it's like i don't know compared to the other ones they just have so many other like uh elements to them that for a beginner i don't know if it would be as easy like fl i felt like when i started i could just go right in and just start even if the ideas sounded terrible i could just put them together and just like start because yeah. like dude i look back at like the stuff from like four years ago and i'm like this is horrible but i at least i was making something and it felt easy to do so i just kept doing it but, like, I feel like yeah. you personally, like, you could get that going a ton, especially if you already have experiences, like, st song structure and everything because you're a rapper and, like, a singer and stuff. It would be way easier, I think, for someone like yourself to get into it. So if you ever do, you got to send me some beats because I want to hear, like, what you come up with for real. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man. I will. I will. You know, I will. But it, it's all about that timing, you know. If you got to take that time to get right at it, do that too. But yeah, yeah. this is what I think. Um, so I only got a few more questions for you, and then we'll wrap up. Um, okay. If you could go back 10 years ago, maybe give yourself advice, maybe not change anything at all about music, about your life, what do you think you'd do? Really? Uh, that's a good one. That's a real good one. <laughs> wow. So, what? 23? Just turned 23, so I'd be 13. Hmm. What what do I do? I wasn't doing nothing crazy. I, I didn't do anything crazy. Still don't do anything crazy. Uh, probably. I would say stay in that piano class because I had a piano class around that time. So I would say I was starting to get into you know music stuff to play it. Mm -hmm. And that will truly help me today. My mama, oh, my mama is so petty with it. Because I was telling her, oh, I want to get in production. And it's like, oh, but it's hard to play the piano. And she looked at me and was like, yeah, you should have stayed in that piano class when you were younger, huh? Oh, now you see how it would have been beneficial right now, wouldn't it? I'd be like, oh, okay. Okay. So that'll probably be the, the one thing I'll say is just, Stay in that piano class, mm. at least learn the basics of the piano enough to be sufficient in it. And then I'll probably be a gotcha producer by now. <laughs> 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 but really, that's the only thing. 
back then it was basketball and music. Yeah. It was the only thing I did, really. <laughs> so, uh, so 10 years from now, uh, where do you think you want to be in your career and life, all that good stuff? Oh, man, uh, 10 years from now, I want to at least being able to quit whatever job I'm doing mm-hmm. and being making money from it at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the top end, I, I want to be one of the big artists in the game, really. Um, I want to be the best, you know. That's just the competitor in me. I want to be the best, but I want to be the best that I can be. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to make enough for me and my family to live. Um, I want to at least see the world, at least call the seeds twice, hopefully twice. You know, if we're still not in the midst of a panoramic 10 years from now, I hope not. But, uh, uh, just be the best I can be at that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. So I know you said you're still working on some stuff. Obviously, you've told that to me as well personally. What projects do you have coming out? Do you have songs coming out soon that we can look forward to? Uh, no, no projects, no songs. Um, I'm just, you know, trying to at least get back into making music consistently. Mm-hmm. Uh. But I know my next project, I want to have a hand in a lot of the production in. Mm-hmm. So that's the main thing I'm working on is getting into producing my own thing, my own stuff. Because the hardest thing for me right now is when I do make some is can I rap on that? Mm-hmm. And, or can I work with that? So that's the main thing I'm working on now I'll probably you know drop a couple music videos with some songs I've done a while back not a while back but that's with the back on track Mm -hmm. uh, EP album so I might drop a couple videos of that and do some crazy stuff around that Mm but uh, not too many projects I'm working on right now Super dope, man. So, I know you're on Instagram. Where else can people find you on social media at? Uh, I have a Twitter. I don't, I don't use, use it that often. I should probably should use it more. Oh, I don't even know my Twitter name. That's the crazy thing. I don't even use mine that Peach much. Po? I think it is Peach Pope on uh, Twitter. Yeah, it's Peach Pope. So, on Twitter is Peach Pope. Uh... On Instagram, it's it's my pants now, and really those are the only two things I use. You know, you can find me on uh, YouTube, uh, SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, iTunes. I can use all that at my dance. Uh, yeah, my dance on all the streaming platforms. So, yeah. So, do you have any final words of wisdom, Mike, for the listeners? Oh, so that that's a good one. Uh, my saying, pace, um, patience always creates excellence. Basically, don't rush anything. Your time is coming. Uh, still work, work hard. Still be humble. Still be competitive. But don't try to rush into anything mm-hmm. because. If it's not your time for it, you won't succeed in it. Basically. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well said, man. Well, Mike, that's all I have for you today, bro. Like I said, I appreciate you getting back with me about being on the show. Obviously, me and you, hopefully, are going to keep working here in the future. And I'm looking forward to hearing yeah. all the stuff you got coming up, man. Because, like I said, that back on track, that was on another level. So, I feel like if you just keep taking your time and, like, doing what you're doing – Keep speaking the truth, man. You're going to go places, bro. So, like, Thank I'm you. looking forward to all of it. And hopefully we can do this again, you know, maybe in person, hopefully, in the coming years. Obviously, we're probably going to be in the studio soon, you know, one of these days. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure, bro. Thank you, everyone, for listening today. That was episode number 34. 
We'll be back same time next week. As always, hit the support button on your podcast streaming platform if you want to send funds our way. And we'll see you then. Thank you very much.